Hey athletes, I'm Adam. And I'm Lindsay. And this is Burpee Nation. Burpee Nation. Oh. Should we do it again? No. Good enough. Oh. Welcome back, athletes. It's your go to podcast for fitness, OCR, running, CrossFit. And I'm going to get right into it. Adam, what day was yesterday? It was my birthday. It was his birthday. I'm not saying how old. He's so old. And what was one of the gifts that I got you yesterday? A 20 pound weight vest. And do you like it? I love it. Yeah. Because we used to have, we talked about it on our home gym episode, right? We used to have that like 60 pound one that like adjustable with all those like little metal. I don't know, had probably like 24 little metal things in it. Yeah, but it was like an extra large size. It was ginormous. And we're both pretty, pretty small. <laughs> and it goes up to 60 pounds. It didn't like, it didn't sit on my chest. Right. So you got me with a little help from me, I guess, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, like one of the like tactical vests that have like the flat plates that slide into it. And it can like strap to your chest and it, your side it's so like it's snug on. Fits perfect. Right. Fits perfect. Perfectly. Right. Um I mean the, one of the big reasons I wanted to get it was because, you know, we we have started to dabble in CrossFit a little bit and um last year I did the Murph, mm-hmm. um which we'll we'll tell you what that is if you're not familiar. Um but last year I did it and I didn't have the weight vest and I was like I feel good about like how I did and how it felt, but it wasn't legit. You know what I mean? So I'm like, how do I know right. how I actually did? Right. Yeah. I mean, you opened it yesterday and you were like, I'm going to go out to the garage and do a workout right now. Immediately. Immediately. Yeah. So no. what was your workout? What did you do? So it was kind of, um, it wasn't like Murph prep it was per, like a per se. It Murph was like modification. It was like Murph light. Yeah. Like it was like the upper body portion of Murph. Um, so the Murph, if you're unfamiliar, uh, it's done every year on Memorial day, mm-hmm. right? Um, you do a one mile run, you do a hundred pull-ups, 200 pushups, 300 squats, and then another mile run. And everything is with a 20 pound weight vest on. If you're a male, uh, females do a 14 pound weight vest and, um, you can do the 100, 200, 300 portion of that any way you want. You don't have to do all 100 pull-ups before moving on. You don't have to do uh, 200 push-ups before moving on. You can do, I think a lot of people do like 10, 20, 30. Yeah, so it doesn't do have like, to be consecutive. Do like so 10, you don't have to like burn yourself out. Right, you do like 10 rounds of that or something like that. Everybody's a little different. I forget how exactly I did it. I'll have to keep track this year and, and we can talk about it. But uh, So yesterday I did like kind of the upper body portion of that. I knew today was going to be a leg lifting day. So I and I was taking, I did a long run the day before. So mm-hmm. I didn't want to do anything with my legs. Didn't right. want to do the running. Didn't want to do the squats. So I took that out and I did 10 pull-ups, 20 push-ups, and then a 30 second dead hang just to like work my grip a little extra, yeah. especially with the weighted vest on. If you could dead hang with an extra 20 pounds, you can dead hang without the 20 pounds. Right. Uh, so I did, I only did five rounds just because of time constraints. Uh, and then I did a couple different like grip things with the weight vest on mm-hmm. after that. But no, that was a, a fun workout. So 10, uh, 10 pull-ups, 20 push-ups, 30 second dead hang. I did five rounds. You could push that to 10 if you really want to make it a little more of a Murph uh upper body Murph prep, you know, if you want to run before or after you could do that too. If you're like me and you have a leg day before or after or a long run or something like that, then you can just do the dead hang. Um, you know, it, I, I honestly, it's a good workout, even if you're not prepping for Murph, right. you know what I mean? It's a good, Sweat shush. my like, I mean, they're getting a little better now, but you can still see the whites on my calluses from hanging on our pull up bar. Heck so, yeah. That's how you know you did a good workout. Heck yeah. That's how you know to do the work. So um, <clears throat> I guess we're going to try. We kind of talked, and I know this is our fourth episode, but we're going to try to uh, provide like a workout per episode, whether it's you, whether it's me, yeah. whether it's like a guest we have. I mean, Eric gave us one last episode is um, the swimming and right. triathlon sort yeah, of workout. Just to keep things interesting and give you guys some like inspiration, ideas, motivation, just to get out there and sweat a bit. Um, but yeah, and if you try it, let us know. Yeah. Um, 
Adam G underscore OCR, stay wild underscore Lindsay, both on Instagram or burpee nation podcast at gmail.com. Give him a try. Any of the workouts. If you tried Eric's workout, let him know, tag us on it too. But if you try this workout, let us know, take a vid, you know, we'll probably repost it on our, he says vid video, <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> no, not right. There. Uh, take, take, take a video a videography uh, evidence of it. We'll repost it on our stories yeah, and stuff like that. For sure. Um, we're, I think we might even try to start, maybe we'll try to start doing these on our YouTube page. Yeah. We can take like little videos of it and put it up just for like instructional purposes if you're not sure like what we're talking about. Yeah, and if we didn't mention, we do have a YouTube page. We're going to be reviewing like a ton of races, local, not local, um, maybe some products. So we're going to be expanding that soon too. Yeah. As of the recording of this, we just have the first three episodes. This will go up, but yeah, we're going to start trying to add some video content for sure. Right. Cross promote. But anyway, we're here today. Speaking of your grip workout to, um, chat about what we believe are the two most important parts of OCR. Um, so obviously the first being running. It's yeah. still a race. Number one. There's and I, mileage. I think that's the most like under, to, to newcomers. Like I think people who are newer to OCR, maybe just getting into competing, they they might forget how much of a, a running race it is. It's, it's still very much Spartan Savage, no matter what, still very much a running race. Well, yeah, like when you look on their like, you know, social media, their websites, every single picture you're seeing is obstacles. Right. So you're not really thinking about how much running is actually involved yeah. until you're out on the course. Yeah. I mean, think of think of it in this aspect. If you're if you're doing a three mile race and there's 20 obstacles, that's seven obstacles every mile. That's not you know, you're, you're still, and a lot of them end up being right after each other. Yeah. So you're still running, you know, I mean, the guys who, who win these things run like five minute miles, right? five, six minute miles, right. like on tr- terrain. And side note, a lot of these races, I feel like start you off on a hill or a mountain or some type of incline. Like they, they do this to burn you out as quickly as they can. Yeah. And that, I guess, um, is part of like our recommendation. Yeah. Would be to run on some trails, go for hikes. Yes. Hit the mountains. Yes. You know, get, get on like some single track trails. Even like if I know a lot of places say stay on the trail, like there's signs everywhere. But if you're just kind of able to go exploring a little bit, like go through some non trails, do a, geocaching. You know how some people oh, do yeah. that, like geocaching and you have yeah. to like use coordinate, but you're like, Hiking. We did that adventure race a couple of years ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and like a lot of that was using a map to try and like well, go we went through off, the woods. Yeah, we went off. We were not on trails. No. That whole time. We were like walking in a creek in the woods. And honestly, that's a lot of like what the race is. They take you totally off course, off the beaten trail, like into the woods. You are climbing up hills, walking around trees, ducking under things, going over like big boulders. That's what they do. So not only just running on trails, but like hiking through the woods too, like getting yeah. used to that course. Well, it's like, going to help. For you, you were very much a road runner. Yes. Before you started doing OCR. Yes, very much. So, and, and like you, and you say all the time, you're like, I can't see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't, right, right? I don't run with my glasses. Right. Like, so, I mean, get... You and you, you probably still even need to do this a little more. Get out on the trails yeah. and run, yeah, and get used to like that, like eye foot coordination. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely surprised my first race because, again, like when you hear trail race, trail run, I think of like, oh yeah, I've run on like cinder, you know, trails in the park before, right. and it's not that, or, or like a cross country course yeah. where it's like grass, yeah, but it's not like no, you're running through the woods, through the woods, some of the terrain is very technical how many times have we had to go down on our ass because like we're shooting down a mud path and you know you're like (laughs) the last time we did palmerton you came down the back side of the mountain and it was all like rock yeah you know what i mean and and, like that's where you're supposed to be able to make up your time like you went up this like ridiculously steep hill yeah 
and you're like, okay, cool. I'll make it up on the downhill. And you're like, nope, can't run down this. You're like, I'm going to die. Right. Like I'll just, I'll roll down and I'll die, yep. but I'll cross the finish line. And to go with that, to go with the running mm-hmm. and the trail running. Yeah. Have good trail shoes. Um, yes. <laughs> and we'll, Luckily, we could probably do a whole episode on trail shoes and maybe we should. And to maybe give some advice on like what to wear, what not to wear, because that was also something that like I'm glad you introduced me to trail shoes. Because again, being a road runner, I had, you know, my road running Your shoes. Asics, like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's funny, like seeing in an obstacle race, people wearing like sneakers in mud and like in the middle of the woods. It's just, it's, it's rough out there. It's yeah. And it, if you're in like an open, just doing it for fun, it might not be as bad, but I, I have literally seen people, I don't know about Spartan competitive races, but, um, I've run in some trail races where people were wearing sneakers Yeah, and it was muddy Yeah, and they were slipping and yeah. I passed them. Yeah. J- like not because I was faster because I wasn't falling down. How many races have we been in where people are losing shoes too? You're passing people with one yeah. shoe or digging for it in the mud. Yeah. Ugh. I think that happened. Wasn't it? Was it West Point one? I year? remember. I will never forget West Point. Yeah. They were like FYI, like up ahead, it's really muddy, and some people have lost shoes or something but like that. But the mud was up to like our almost our waist. Yeah. I, I was like, where are we? It was wild. It was so wild. yeah, trail shoes are definitely important. And yeah. get them, test them out, break them in. Make sure, you know, when they start to wear down, that you get some new ones. I ran, ran with the same pair that, that Palmerton race. I had like my older pair. And after that race, I was like, I need new trail shoes. Because I didn't trust myself going down the hill mm-hmm. at that steep of an angle and that kind of terrain without falling. Like I had to go slower. And obviously, like if you're trying to compete, Anything that slows you down is a negative. Yeah. So yeah, have good trail shoes. And it's not just for like OCR or trail race. Like they're a good investment just to get out into the woods or out at your local park. Where, and Where I'm hiking. Right. Like get comfortable. Even for like your grass runs. Like they're, again, a good investment. If you guys need some recommendations, we've both worn. Uh, a couple different. Kinds. Yeah. And like some that I've seen, like there are, are some shoes that I like, I'm not going to say the name but like i've i've seen people wear like a specific brand a lot and then i bought it and i hated it yeah so like you're not like gonna exactly be okay with getting the same thing everybody else gets yeah i know what brand you're talking about i've seen what happens <laughs> yeah it was a uh what's the quick lace or whatever yeah. i'll just say it was like a quick lace i was not into it yeah they um, snapped it wasn't good yeah right During before our- I racers. thought it was right before, but you had your other trail shoes, like your old ones that you had to put on them. It might have been before that adventure race. Maybe I forget. Not important to yeah. to this episode, but but yeah, um, definitely running on the trails. Sorry, I cut you off. No, go ahead. Hiking, um, like I said, when you're starting a race, they try to, at least for OCR, like put you on a incline immediately to burn you out. So. Definitely adding elevation to your runs too. Yeah, specific races. I mean, there are some like in very flat areas. Yeah, and you don't have they to can't do about. much. But if you plan on doing more than one OCR uh-huh. in more than one location, you're probably going to run into a mountain somewhere. Yeah. Even if it's not like West Point. I mean, I guess it's pretty mountainous over in that way. But like if, if there's a hill, they'll find it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. even have to be in a mountainous area. I know Savage, Maryland that we're going to be doing uh, pretty soon. That like That's a relatively flat course, but there are still a couple spots in the woods mm-hmm. that they found this like steep angled hill. It's, you know, maybe only 100 feet long or something like that. But like if there's a hill like that, they will make you yeah, run up it. And it's, you know, like don't think these are just normal hills. Like if there is a steep, slippery, effing hill, like you're going to go on it and maybe they'll add like a little rope there to help you, but probably, they're not afraid not. <laughs> to make you like dig your fingernails and pull you yeah. up this hill. Right. Use uh, branches and stuff. Right. Um, and to go with the elevation part of it, mm-hmm. something that we've done in the past, you, whether it's, you know, beginning of your workout, end of your workout, or if you use it as your workout, get on the treadmill 
throw it at 15%, get comfortable at that steep incline. Mm-hmm. Do I know like there was a couple times I was like, all right, when back when we went to a gym, like they had like the newer treadmills, I would set it at a 15% incline and see how quickly I could get to a mile. Right. Um, and then like do that, not every time, but every once in a while. Or sometimes I would, you know, um, set it at 15, run a quarter mile, set it at 10, run a quarter mile, yeah. set it at back to 15 or even just walking on it. Or like sometimes I would just warm up walking for on an incline. half a mile. Yeah. And we do have some experience with this because before we moved into our like gym that we have now, um, in our garage, we did have a gym membership and, you know, at like your standard planet fitness or LA fitness, um, they like, you kind of have to get creative if you are wanting to start OCR workouts or do OCR workouts. So we did get creative. So, you know, even with you saying that you did the incline on the treadmill, like pick up kettlebells or dumbbells and start doing a farmer carry on like there a medicine too. Ball. Yeah. Um, carry that on your back or get creative. Yeah, definitely. And if you, if you have some hills near you, like hill sprints are cool. Um, but I think they only get you so far. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to get used to like that long grueling hill. Yeah. That like, and if like we have a mountain, not too terribly far, there's like a mile, I think it's like a mile with, with about 400 feet of ascent, which is pretty good mm-hmm. in a mile. Um, you know, go do repeats, go up it, come back down, go up, come back down. If you have the time to like, you know, I know that if you're doing a mile up and a mile down, that's, you know, <laughs> a lot of mileage, but or go halfway and come back down. Yeah. Something like find ways to do like longer hill repeats, half mile to a mile. So that yeah. when the race comes up, you're like. This, this ain't so bad unless you're, you know, it's very hard to train for like it's a Palmerton or like certain <laughs> things like that. Like you're going up a double black a mi- diamond for like a mile. Yeah. yeah. Like that's hard to train. It's for. not even an exaggeration though. That's hard to train. I for. don't want the listeners to think we're exaggerating. <laughs> it is it's, a mile straight up. Yeah. Like, no, it's legitimately a mile. And like, <laughs> you know, the only way to really train for that, you know, is is to make sure you're doing the treadmill probably fifteen yeah. percent, and yeah. like some of the inclines are probably higher than that. Some people have those incline trainers that go up to like uh, like crazy percentages, yeah. like forty or something. And like if you have one of those, cool. Not everybody can can afford one, but yeah. But make sure I would give yourself like if you know there's a mountainous race coming up or a race with any kind of hills, like give yourself a solid six weeks of incline training. And like, let yourself feel the burn because you will in these races. Yeah, like don't like, like everything's gonna hurt when it starts hurting. <laughs> don't like stop. Right. <laughs> like right. Get your body used to that. Yep. So for sure. Um, go ahead with the next one. I'll leave you. So yeah, running was um, obviously the first important part of. Oh, I thought OCR. we had one more po- part of running. Yeah, that's kind of a given. Sprints and speed. Yeah, but not just like thirty second sprints. Like th- those are cool, good to add in too. But do like sprint endurance. You know what I mean? Because you're running, like I said, these guys run fast. Yeah. So if you want to keep up with them or come close or whatever, like improve your placement, again, very much a running race. So yeah. go out and do, you know, half mile repeats at a fast pace at like yeah. a 5K or whatever and do like six of them till you hit three miles, depending on what kind of races you want to run. You right. know what I mean? So Yeah. We talked about um, doing, you know, because like you and I try to get to the track as often as we can, but doing those speed workouts on the track and then adding some like burpees in between them or, right. you know, doing the push-ups, body weight stuff. Like we'll bring a bucket sometimes, you know, filled with our cinders and I bring a kettlebell everywhere that I can go. Um, so again, just getting creative with those workouts, doing the sprint and speed, doing the elevation, getting on the trails and hiking, but also adding in some longer stuff, longer stuff. Is that what you mean? No, like OCR workouts. Right. Oh, I mean, something we didn't really talk about was mileage. Yeah. Like for the most part, you're going to need to add on mileage. Yeah. Like not just like running in general, but like I, we did our marathon training and I immediately saw my times drop. Yeah. Because I, I had never run that much mileage. My legs were getting conditioned now. And now they're in better shape to to do the quicker stuff at shorter mileage. Mm-hmm. So my 5K time dropped like everything. Yeah. So like if, if you're only running, I don't know, like 40 miles a month, 
it's probably not going to cut it. Like you need to be, I mean, what were we doing? Like 80, 90, somewhere in that range. I know some people, some people get to like 200. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Like you'll probably get hurt if you're not used (laughs) to that kind of mileage, but like take it easy, listen to your body, but try to up your mileage a little bit if you can. Yeah. Okay. Now the second part. Second part. (laughs) Um, yeah, obviously first part was running. Second part, we chatted about it. I feel like everyone would agree would be grip. For sure. Like, (laughs) oh my God. We're looking through all the obstacles and the big three that we covered in episode one. And we were like, holy shit. The amount of like grip and forearm strength that you need for almost every single obstacle is just insane. And like, you're going to finish an OCR race and everything, your forearms are going to be throbbing, your, everything's going to hurt. It's great. And a lot of my earlier races, I, like, I know one Savage in particular, at the end of it, my arm, my hands were just torn up because I, I wasn't used to it. Yeah. My hands weren't used to it. Not like, not even just grip strength, like hand, like calluses, like, yeah, you're going to get calluses, do enough grip training to where like you're, you feel the calluses, you don't, hopefully you don't open them. You know, if, if they're hurting, take maybe a day or two off in your grip training. I wouldn't train grip every day. I would go yeah. maybe twice a week, at least once a week. Don't ignore it for sure. Yeah. Um, Do you remember when I was getting like more in depth with my, or before I got like more in depth with my like grip training or any, and even strength in general? Um, where were we? I think it was West Point, I guess. Sorry, we keep talking about West Point, but is that where I did Twister for the first time? And um, I didn't have any calluses. Any- I think the first time you did Twister was Maryland. Okay. Yeah. It was like no. a shorter Twister, yeah. Really? That was your first race. And it was there. No, my first race was was DC. Well, that's what I meant, sorry. Oh. It was in Maryland. It I didn't do it DC. my first time. There was Twister on that race. Okay, but I did not finish Twister my first time. Oh, the first time you completed yes. Twister. I'm sorry. Probably West Point, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it was West Point. Yeah. Because I remember it being in the woods. But remember I had to like, I almost got to the finish and then I oh, dropped. Oh, you did it again. I had to do it again. I think and I massaged your maybe arms. I'd, yeah, and you yelled so at me. Yeah, so embarrassing. <laughs> what if I knew people there? I was just trying to help you out. Oh my God. But um, yeah, my like, my, my, uh, I didn't even have calluses, but where your calluses should be like ripped open. Yeah. And I was like, it fuck. Ha- Honestly, it probably happens to everybody. Oh yeah. It's bound to. Yeah. And like. But again, like this is stuff that'll just help with that. Right. When you're, when you're doing, and you know what? Like I remember early on, like I had so much trouble with that, with calluses and you're going to like, when you start doing grip strength and like, we haven't even got to the types of grip strength yet, but when you start doing grip strength and training it more, you're going to develop those calluses and like, you're going to be scared that they tear open. And and what I did actually. Oh, you're going to tell people. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Well, it worked. Oh. So like if you want to try like it, I I I cuz I re, I researched it. This okay. was from the internet and we all know we can trust the internet. All right. Well, we're going to lose all of our listeners, so here we go. What? I'm going to say it anyway. So I got <laughs> a pumice stone and like pumice, I didn't even pumice. know what a pumice stone was. Luckily, so like you can't make fun of me too much cuz Don't I, look at I, me like I didn't know what it was. I know, but so so I f- went to Target, got one for like three bucks. And what you're supposed to do is it's just like a, a stone. It looks like a sponge, but it's hard. It's hard, right. Like a stone, yeah. Yeah, so you like, I forget, I think you have to wet your hands, um, you you know, underwater or if you're in the shower or whatever, and you just rub the stone on like where your calluses are and it kind of smooths them out. And like the, the issue with calluses is, they get like hard and raised and all that stuff. And that's when they open. Yeah. So this helped me keep them from opening. And then eventually like you, you train grip enough and your hands kind of get used to it. Now I've obviously been ignoring it a little bit cause I'm getting those calluses back. I don't have the pumice stone anymore, but I think my hands are, are okay at this point. We actually have two pumice stones now. So that is a lie. Oh, we do. Yeah. Oh, they're underneath our, our cabinet in our sink. I thought we would bathroom. have thrown those out like in the move. They're there because I didn't know. Whenever, you know, you wanted to get back into that. All right. So maybe we should finish recording You always yell at me for throwing things out because you're a hoarder. Right. Well, maybe we should throw finish this later so I can go pumice real quick. Yeah. I haven't had to do it in a while. Anyway, the point is if you're just starting and like you're like, oh my gosh, my hands, like the calluses won't go away. They keep opening, blah, blah, blah. Like give, give it a try if you want. 
it's like really cheap. It's like three or four bucks at this store. So, um, but ways to train your dead or your grip. Right. I kind of gave it away. Dead, dead hang. Dead hang. <laughs> Um, there's like a couple, so grip is weird cause there's different types of grip training. Yeah. So there's like the hanging yeah. and there's like the holding, right? I guess. Right. Yeah. So like dead hang is a really good one. What I would recommend is like, if you're new to it, um, work on like obviously a two arm dead hang, but make that goal to be a one arm dead hang at yeah. some point when you can get to a one arm dead hang. It's really going to help you out. And that's mm-hmm. how you know your grip is is like at a pretty good spot, I yeah. would say. If your you obstacles can, are going to be so much easier if you can do that. Right. And like, you know, we have athletic tape wrapped around our metal bar to kind of help a little bit. Um, you know, our, our other pull-up bar has like those padding on it, which yeah. tend to move around a little bit. Not yeah. always the best uh, option. But like try and find, honestly, try and find like just a long straight bar if mm-hmm. you're going to be doing dead hangs. But athletic tape helps more almost for like sweat. Like I, that's why, I mean, like it helped in the winter time because you weren't touching like metal kettlebells and right. the bar that's super cold on your hands. But I feel like it's more for sweat. Like you can do those pull-ups and dead hangs without slipping off for or if training. You're getting really crazy, you could go wash your hands and then try to dead hang and simulate Whoa. wet weather. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like definitely some dead hanging. Um, when you get more comfortable and you can do the one arm, try some hip touches. Yeah, I can do this now. Yeah. Uh, you basically hang straight arm, let go of your, let's say left hand first, touch mm-hmm. your left hip, put your left hand back up, let go of your right arm, touch your right hip. So yep. same arm, same hip kind yep. of thing. And again, maybe this is something we'll, we'll put on uh, YouTube at some point. When you get good at that, then I think the next progression would actually be shoulder taps. Yeah. Which um, it's it's still grip, I would say, right? Yeah. Okay. Because so you pull yourself yeah, up to ninety degrees. You go opposite this time. So you keeping trying to keep it that ninety degree. That's why it's a little tougher. Yeah. You let go. You touch your right arm to your left shoulder. Back on left arm to your right shoulder. Back on. So it's opposite, keeping that ninety degree hold. Try and, you know, if you can get like 10 total of each of those, I would say that's a pretty good, pretty good spot to be. Yeah. But I think too, like, it's also important to keep doing uh, dead hangs and like constantly be adding on like, all right, I'm going to do an extra five seconds this week, an extra five seconds this week and to be building that. Right. And that's kind of also why I did the weighted vest dead hang. I've never done that before. So I wanted to try like adding some extra weight, figuring that then when I take that weight off, it's like, you know. Baseball players who have the donuts on their bat, the yeah. weighted donuts. Like the idea is that train heavier so that when you're actually doing it for real with the less weight, it's easier. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and then you mentioned like the hang versus the hold stuff. So we have, um, you know, like our plate weights doing like a pinch like plate a, hold, yep. um, you know. Which you can kind of also get creative with those and do more of like a farmer carry with them or like a calf raise with them or just, you know, um, same thing with a farmer carry using dumbbells, kettlebells um, for grip again, too. I've I've done a couple of times you wrap a towel yeah. around like a dumbbell or a kettlebell or even a plate. And you can hold I just the, say you hold something? The towel. I feel like, guys, like Adam is the king of getting super creative with like every single workout. Like if you're looking for some crazy different workouts, seriously, like reach out or follow Adam or email whatever's easier for you. But he gets, what was it, like a week or two ago? So we hung our rope from our power rack. Um Which is what? Maybe like the rope was like six feet off, seven feet off the ground. Yeah, like it's not super high. Like you can, but so it was hung in the middle of our um, grips for our like pull up. Yep. Um, But he was practicing, like he jumped up on the rope. And like you can't go far because again, it's only like seven feet off the ground. Right. Like when I stand on the rope, my feet are like a foot off the ground. Right. But you're still like holding yourself up on the rope. On a rope. And then you let go of the rope with your right arm and grabbed the pull-up bar and then with your left arm grab the pull-up bar and then got back on the rope right and then you kept doing that back and forth and i was like this is this is great and that's not only like grip that's even and what made me do that actually was like seeing some of these savage rigs that they keep coming out yeah. with like 
how often, unless you have a rig in your backyard, how often can you rig train? So like, it's just about finding ways to even like simulate a rig somehow. And that's kind of like what I came up with. I'm like, well, like there's ropes usually, there's bars usually or something. You just transition. Well, even when we use like our landmine um, to do, you know, whatever we're doing with it, like you'll get again, creative and use the towels for that. Um, the pieces that we got with like the cable pulley and like with our bands, yep. the different, uh, what do you call them? The attachments? Yeah. Yeah. The there's like, like a rope attachment, right. like handles and right. stuff. Yeah. So you get creative with those and yeah. Yeah. I mean, so the one workout I, I really enjoyed for grip and we'll do, we're going to do an episode like all grip training and workouts. So I, I won't give away too much, but like it was, I was doing some like. Bi- like bicep tricep arm just arm stuff with like a little grip so we have those fat grips mm-hmm. which really come in handy um they're like these if you don't know what they are look them up just google fat grips they'll, they'll come right up they're like these this uh, rubber uh, rubber thing that goes around yeah. your your barbell or maybe whatever. like five inches and it just makes them wa- bigger yeah um and i had actually heard i forget where i heard it but the monkey bars, you know how the monkey bars for Spartan are so big? Yes. Like that's good training because you're you're just getting your hands used to grabbing something larger. E- <laughs> e- that's what she said. Yeah. Uh, but um, like doing something like that and then going right into a hang then. So mm-hmm. like practice doing both. Do some like grip, uh, holding grip, and then go to a hanging grip. Yeah. You know, get your arms, like do a farmer carry and then go dead hang. Yeah. Like that's a really good way to do both and like don't like jump right into farmer's carries either like (laughs) i'll say that like don't just be like never do it and then just pick up a 50 pound dumbbell and try to farmer carry right i remember i struggled so much when i did some stadiums like a few years ago because they had you farmer carry like 45 pound like water kegs or whatever they were um and i would like try to and like it was hard for me and then when I would try to train I'm like all right I'm gonna carry these 45 pounders and like I would struggle and I wasn't getting anywhere Mm -hmm. so like I dropped it to like 40 pounds got comfortable with 40 and then went to 45 yeah so like always be weary of like how you're doing that kind of stuff yeah I definitely remember being at the gym one time and we were doing again you put together some crazy workout something like creative for us that you know we were probably pissing everybody off because we were like no we're using those like where are those people, but yeah, yeah we, sorry, we use, we're using this treadmill <laughs> for the next half hour. But like we're also using these else. three stations because we're doing a. <laughs> oh right, we're doing like a circuit. <laughs> but I had my I had the incline on a fifteen, and I was like, this is this is great. I'm all excited doing farmer carries, and I don't know what weight I had, but it was, I mean, stepping on a fifteen percent incline and then having farmer carry too, and it was it was way too heavy. Yeah, and I was just like, nope. <laughs> yeah, but I had to run all the way back down because how the the gym was like multiple. Like yes, it was like the treadmills floors. were upstairs yeah. and like everything else was downstairs. So after like not even 30 seconds, I was like, sorry, everybody, I got to go get a lower weight. Got to go grab that <laughs> real quick. Yeah. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, and, and we picked these up, it, on, online it says they're 40 bucks. I feel like you might be able to find them cheaper. Probably. Were they 40 when we bought them? I don't remember. I don't um, it's called a Rock Ring 3D training hold. Um, it's basically like a oval shape almost. Um, the top of it's flat or not flat. I'm sorry, rounded. Yeah. So that if you want to, you, you can grip that. That's the easiest grip under that is like a little cutout that you could fit. I think four fingers, Yeah. but no thumb obviously. And you can only get your fingertips. The top part that's round, you could probably get your whole finger over. Fingertips. Yes. Uh, yeah. the next one down is a smaller cutout that you would be able to fit three fingers. Mm-hmm. And then the final one is a really small one that you can fit two fingers I can't like we have those. Yeah. I never have even probably attempted the two no. finger hold, but like those are really good just for like dead hanging. Like if you want to do, you know, the whole, the one that can fit the top part, the easiest part, and then like work your way to the three finger part with the fingertips. Yeah. Like I would say that's enough. If you can do that kind of stuff, like as far as a Spartan or a Savage or like OCR goes, like again, running is yeah. really important. And if you can do that kind of grip stuff, like you'll be fine. Yeah. I can only do a pull up on those, but we have them. <laughs> right. We can hang from them. Yeah. No. If you can do a pull up, you can hang. Right. 
So what else? Is that it? Yeah. I mean, like you said, we're going to dedicate, I mean, we're going to have tons of episodes coming up on, you know, running specific and then an episode on just grip workouts, um, which will probably reach out to some of you guys for them. Um, yeah, this was kind of more of like a guideline right? yeah. to like, you know, if you're new to OCR, if right. you're trying to look into maybe getting competitive, like yeah. m- it gives you a little focus, grip and running for sure. And then once you like start to hone in on those, you can get creative, like we said, and but I, I would totally not ignore like when you're doing your running or your grip, like try it with like a, a higher heart rate or do like a speed running workout and go dead hang. Yeah. Like combine the two. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like get used to doing stuff with, with a high heart rate. Right. For sure. Cause that's the toughest part. I mean, how many times are we running into an obstacle every time and you gotta like stand there for a few seconds, <laughs> yeah. catch your breath, then do it. You it's know what hard, I mean? Like, man. Obstacle transitions are big. Yeah. For sure. If you guys have any like, crazy cool like grip workouts let us know because we're always looking for new things we'll totally Um, share them yeah yeah unless you don't want us to (laughs) (laughs) but yeah or any workouts not just grip or running or track workouts just anything that you have going on like let us know we love to hear from them and and try new things yeah so um i guess that about does it yeah um again if you want to follow us on instagram uh Adam G underscore OCR, stay wild underscore Lindsay. Yep. Um, you can email us, Burby Nation Podcast at gmail.com. We're available pretty much anywhere every you would listen. Every second of every day. Oh, no, I meant where you yeah. can download the podcast. Okay. That's awkward. Yeah. No, you're right. So, as I was saying, <laughs> you can download the podcast pretty much anywhere. I mean, iTunes, Google, like all the major ones, some of the minor ones. Um, Go on our YouTube page, subscribe, follow that, follow along with that. So we'll be posting stuff on there. Yeah, we'll be up and running on that. Um, this, later. yeah, our next episode or in the next couple episodes, we'll be talking some running with a guest. Yeah. Um, we're working on a couple other guests, and uh, like Lindsay said, we'll we'll be doing some other specific. You know, we'll we'll probably dedicate an entire like half hour episode to grip training and at least and everything and we'll be talking plenty of running we'll have some crossfit people on so uh make sure you subscribe so that you get the episodes as they come uh other than that i think uh that about does it for this episode that about does it yeah so we will uh thank you for listening obviously first and foremost but um we will see you on the next one hopefully see ya